the kid's sitting down to review a game. Her task ain't an easy one. Not one of those do see do flats of fancy you read about in storybooks. You gotta know how to play right. Keep your cards close. And luckily, the kid just got dealt the ace of spades. This could get annoying after a while. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. Hey everyone, this is Beth Elderkin again with iPadInside.com and today we are looking at Bastion, an indie action RPG that was released last year on the Mac and PC and then got an iPad release in late August. In this game you play the kid, a law-abiding citizen who wakes up to a world that's literally being built around him. His world was destroyed by the Calamity, a cataclysmic event that turned just about everyone he knew and loved into dust, as well as angered a slew of monsters and baddies that you have to fight as you try to restore balance to the world. Let me start by saying this game is absolutely gorgeous. It's largely done in a hand-painted style reminiscent of games like Braid or the Chaos Rings series, which I reviewed a couple months back. It gives this game an otherworldly feel and brings more depth to an environment that's literally hanging thousands of feet into the air. The game's controls are pretty easy to use, and the game does give you some variety depending on what you like to do better. You can either use the touchscreen to move around, or you can use a traditional D-pad. I myself with this game preferred the touchscreen, believe it or not, but I would really recommend trying out both and seeing what you like best. They're both equally effective. One thing I really loved about this game was the aiming system. As you may know, aiming on a game with a touchscreen isn't always easy when you're battling scores of enemies that are surrounding you on all sides. But luckily, this game has an auto-aiming system that will target an enemy as long as you're pointed in their general direction and you're within aiming distance for whatever weapon you're using. If that's too easy for you, that's okay. There's actually plenty of gameplay variety that will help keep you challenged, even in multiple rounds of gameplay. The weapons in this game are fun and numerous, from the dual pistols, machete, a cannon, or even a, a one of those blowing machines that spews fire from the pits of hell. There is a lot of variety to choose from, but sadly you can only equip two of them at a time, which did frustrate me a little bit, especially when I had a couple that were my personal favorites. I really didn't end up using the others because you can only take two with you. So I would just leave the other ones behind. Now we're gonna move on to what I consider the most gray area part of this game, which is going to be the narrator. Now in this game, the kid never speaks. No characters speak except for this one old man narrating your actions, whether or not you're making the right or the wrong decisions. He's guiding you every step of the way, giving you a little background information to the story and revealing plot points along the way. There's no more mountains now. There's no place left for the beasts of the wild to go. Now, the hard part about this is, I did love the narrator, but I really hated him at the same time. Now, this is in no part the fault of the voice actor. He is fantastic. He really reminded me of a character that would exist in Firefly, one of my personal favorite sci-fi shows. He was like a guy sitting around a campfire telling some stories to kids. But the problem in this game is that he never stops talking. Even when you're in the middle of battling scores of enemies, he's out there spouting some kind of exposition or telling you what you're doing wrong, but if you stop to listen to him, you could die. So you're having this constant battle of, do I listen to him because he's really cool, or do I continue fighting because I want to keep living? I did read some other reviews of this game that said their favorite part was the narration, and you know what? That's fine. It was a great narration. I personally got sick of it after a little while, but... Did I keep playing the game? Yes. And do I think you should play it? Absolutely yes. It was a fun, action-packed game with a lot of color, a lot of vibrancy, and the story is really, really good and it gets more interesting later on. The only reason I would not recommend you play it is if you do not like narration, if you, do, if you prefer show, don't tell, and do not like people laying out exposition for you. Because that's what the narrator is. He is the exposition fairy. And for some people, that's good. And some people, it's not as good. So it just depends on your personal preference. Me, I liked it, I will play it again, but the narration kind of graded me a little bit. This game is priced at $4.99 and is available in the Apple Store. The game was independently purchased by the Post's author, 
For more information regarding the site's review policies, please visit the About page in the link provided below. Thanks so much for tuning into iPod. The kid's sitting down to review a game. Not again.